equation. Okay, adding and subtracting and multiplying radicals. Let's start with adding and subtracting first. <clears throat> to add or subtract radicals. You don't have to like radicals to have like radicals. So like radicals is like like terms, right? If we're adding or subtracting an algebra, you know, 3x plus 2x, we can do, get 5x. 3x plus 2y, we can't do. They are not like terms. So like radicals are things like, well, let's just do easy ones. So let's say 2 root 5 plus 3 root 5 plus 6 root 5, what do you think that would be equal to? 11 root 5, exactly, right? <laughs> and sometimes it's actually handy to think of it just as you would in terms of algebra. Just say, well, what if I had to do 2x plus 3x plus 6x? I would get 11x. Well, I'm doing 2 root 5s plus 3 root 5s, plus 6 root 5s, so in total I have 11 root 5s. Okay. So those are like radicals, right? They're all root 5. Now if we have something like... <laughs> so what if we have 5 root 3, plus 2 root 6, plus 3 root 3? What are we going to get there? <laughs> so what do we have? Yeah, we have eight root threes and we have two root sixes. So the root threes are like terms, they can be added or subtracted, right? And the root six is not. So it just stays as a root six. If there were another root six term in there, so I'll do another one that's sort of similar. Uh, let's say we have 9 root 11 minus root 11 plus 6 root 14 minus 3 root 14 minus 2 root 11. So what will that be equal to? So we have 6 root 11, right? We have 9 root 11 minus root 11. So if there's no number in front, what's the number? 1, right? So 9 root 11 minus 1 root 11 is 8 root 11. Minus 2 root 11 it gives me 6 root 11. And then we get plus 3 <coughs> root 14. Right? And keep in mind that we don't then try and say, oh, well, that's 9 root 25 or something like that, right? Those are not like terms. You can't combine them. Okay? So we end up with just root 11s and root 14s. Gentlemen, you want to just take it out in the hall, have your discussion, come back when you're ready, and then stop having the discussion. Thank you. Um, now, problem comes. Let's say we get something like... Root 12 plus root 27. What's that equal to? Are they like terms, just the way they're sitting there? No. But can they be reduced or simplified? Yes. So what's root 12? <coughs> yeah, so 2 root 3. What's root 27? 3 root 3. What's 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3? 5 root 3. Okay? So, we may have to change from entire radicals to mixed radicals to then say, oh, so I really do have like terms here, and they can be added or subtracted, right? So, root 12 plus root 27 you can't do, but when converted to mixed uh, radicals, then they become root 3s, and we can add those. <clears throat> okay, let me 
give you one more. You can give this one a try. It's a little practice. So root 28 minus root 27 plus root 63. Okay, so at first glance, no like radical. There's nothing that at first glance, there's nothing that I can collect together. So I need to change these. Okay. By whatever method you like, you, you know, want to show a root 28 as 4 times 7, which is root 4, root 7, and, or if you want to go directly to the mixed radical form. <clears throat> so at this point, when I'm doing examples up here, I'm going to go straight from entire radical to the mixed radical form, right, without going through any intermediate steps. All right. But you can do steps if you want. So what do we get here? Okay, so you might go through a couple of lines in between there, right? You might want to write this as, well, it's the root of four times seven, looking for a perfect square, right? We don't look to go to root 28, we're not going to write as 2 times 14, right? Because we can't simplify that. <clears throat> okay, so we need 4 times 7. 9 times 3, right? We need one of the factors to be a perfect square. Okay, then we split it out, so it becomes root 4, root 7, which becomes 2, root 7. This becomes root 9, root 3, which is 3, root 3 becomes root 9 root 7, which is 3 root 7. This becomes root 100 root 3, which is 10 root 3. So how many root 7s do we have? We have 5 root 7s. And how many root 3s do we have? Okay, plus 7 root 3. Alright, and watch out for the signs. Okay, if you're adding or subtracting, we could have negative. Right, we might have a negative term, we might have positive terms. All right, so that's pretty basic stuff. Well, that's sort of the basics. Now, to add to it then, we're going to throw in some variables underneath, right? Because this stuff here, the root 28, that, that's all last year's stuff, right? I mean, just changing an entire radical to a mixed radical is math 10c. Okay? We're doing something new now because we're adding and subtracting, but still we're just basing it off of changing an entire radical to a mixed radical. So what did we add to the mix yesterday? We threw some variables in there, right? So let's do a question. Let's throw some variables in there. Ah, so what shall we do? No, sorry. One. One an x to the seventh there. So at first glance, there's no right, like radicals. I got x to the seventh. I got an x. I got a 16 x to the fifth. So if that's the case, then what we want to do is try and express the entire radical as a mixed radical. So what do we do with the root x to the seventh? So this one I'll show in a little more detail, right? So what's the largest power of x that we can take half of, right? We got to split this up, we're going to go x to the 6th times x, right? So we're looking for the largest even number, right? Because this is a square root, when you move something out from underneath the square root, you take half of the power, so we're looking for the largest even number. The 5x cubed root x just is what it is, there's nothing to simplify there. Minus 3, that's an x cubed root x, not a cube root, so writing that as well as I should. 
I mean, you're going to get it'll be typed, so it'll be sort of obvious that you know the three is on here, not in here. And when you're writing, make sure that that's. I mean, you know, if it's all square roots, I'm going to assume if there's a three there that you're cubing something, you're not all of a sudden changing it to a cube root. So I will go within the context of the question. Um, three x. So this sixteen x to the fourth times x, right? So we're, we're looking for something under the radical sign that has a square root. So 16 has a square root, and x to the fourth has a square root. Okay, so let's go one step further. So the thing that has a square root is this. And the thing that has a square root is this and we're left with root x. So what's the square root of x to the sixth? So we get three x cubed root x plus five x cubed root x. <clears throat> and here we've got three x. What's the square root of 16 x to the fourth? Four x squared. get the root x. Okay, one more line to simplify, because we've got to collect these together, right? So 3x cubed root x plus 5x cubed root x minus 12x cubed root x. So these are all like terms, right? They have an x cubed and they have a root x. If I had like an x squared and a root x, they would not be like terms. So like terms have to have the same variable outside the radical sign and the same variable inside the radical sign, right? If that was an x squared root x, then this would just be a term by itself, and I would be collecting the first two terms together. But it's not. They're all like terms, so we get 3 plus 5. So at this point, we ignore the terms, right? We say it's going to be an x cubed root x. How many of them are there? So how many of them are there? There are negative 4 of them. Okay, so we, what do we do? We change entire radicals to mixed radicals, get everything in the lowest mixed radical form, so it means you're not looking at uh, you know, a perfect square under the radical sign still. If you've got like a root 9x squared under there, you say, oh, okay, I've got to take that or it's 3x. You do it in uh, whatever level of detail you want. So in other words, if you want to go, this is the full meal deal, right? I mean, that's, that's showing absolutely everything. You might be able to go from that line to that line, and that's fine. Okay. You might be able to go from that line to this line, yeah, right down to there. Right. Just saying, well, that's going to be an x cubed, so it would be x cubed root x. That can't simplify, and that's going to be a 4x squared, so that will be minus 12x cubed. So you can go right to this line, right? From here, you can go right to here, and then down to there. But if you're going to, the least that you can show is that line, not that one. That line and that line. Okay. So the least amount of work <clears throat> is doing this. If this is the original question, then you're showing two lines worth of work. Don't go directly to the answer. All right. I want to show at least. I want to see at least one intermediate step. All right. I want to see you go from entire radicals here to mixed radical form. Okay. Any questions on this? All right, same deal holds if you're doing fourth roots or fifth roots or seventh roots or 27th roots or whatever, right? It doesn't matter what roots you're doing. As long as the roots are all the same, right? We cannot mix up cubed roots with square roots and fourth roots with fifth roots, all right? They will not be like terms unless they have the same index and the same uh, variables underneath. All right, let's see if I want to do anything else on this. Uh, we've got those. Oh, let's just do one other. <coughs> let's throw a fourth root in just for the heck of it. So. OK, 
Okay, 4 through to 16. What is 4 through to 16? Two. Two. Just two. Does this have a perfect fourth that goes into it? Okay, so 81 goes in. 81 is a perfect fourth. Right? We got 3, 9, 27, 81. So 3 to the fourth. So you can pull. All right, hang on. Sorry, I can pull the 81 out. All right, so here. We'll scratch papers over here, right? Here's my, here's my scrap paper. 4 through to 162 is equal to the 4 through to 81 times 2 is 4 through to 81. 4 through 2 is 3, 4 through 2. So in this case, we get the 2, and we get the 3 times the 4 through of 2, right? That's the simplified form. All right, and we've worked with variables in there, so it's all good. Okay, let's multiply. Uh, new page. Multiplying radicals. <clears throat> so, oh, there's a nice intro somewhere in multiplying radicals. Da -da -da, let me okay, well, <clears throat> just like we did, or if you think about when we simplify a radical, we break it out, right? So we do something like root 18 is equal to the root of 9 times 2, which is root 9 root 2 which in this case is 3 root 2. If we work this process backwards, then root 9 times root 2 is the root of 9 times 2. So root 2 times root 3 is the root of 2 times 3, which is root 6. Okay? And you can verify this by multiplying on your calculator. You can go root 2 times root 3, hit enter, get a decimal, go root 6, and say, hey, they're the same. Right? These things are identical to each other. Um, if we multiply, <coughs> let's step up one level. So let's put a number in front. So if we go 2 root 5 times, say so we have 2 root 5 times 3 root 6. So in order to multiply, what do you think we're going to do? So it becomes 2 times 3. Does it matter what order I multiply things in? No. No, right? So that means that I can multiply the 2 times the 3, and then the root 5 times the root 6, which gives me 6 root 30, right? And I don't expect you to write this out. I just expect you. So what we do is we multiply the coefficients, that is the number in front, multiply those together, then multiply the radicals, right? Just basically putting them together under the radical sign. So root 5 times root 6 is root of 5 times 6, which is root 30. But what we have to do is something we have to do now that we may not have had to do before, and that is we've got to look and see if the root 30 reduces, which it doesn't, right? There's no perfect square that goes into 30. But what if we had something like three root two times four root six? So the first thing we do is 3 times 4, right, which is 12. 12 root what? 12 root 12. And then we go, but wait a sec, root 12 simplifies, right? Root 12, 12 is 4 times 3, root 12 is 2 root 3. So this becomes 12, you know, I'll work it in full detail. <coughs> Right now, I'm okay if you go from here, 
right to there, right? But I want to show you this is exactly what's going on, right? The root 12 is the root of 4 times 3, which is root 4, root 3, which is 2 root 3, so it's 12 times, and I expect you mostly to do this in your head, right? Just look at this, go, it's 12 times 2 root 3, which is going to give me 24 root 3, okay? Why did that happen? Well, there's a root 2 here, and this is 2 times 3. So we get a root 2 times a root 2, which is 2. Right? And that's not an important thing. When you're multiplying radicals, if you get the same radical, right? So in other words, here, let's just do one. So what is... Uh, what do you need to say that is? Actually, let me make it a little easier here. Let's make this a 2 root 6. So what's that equal to? 60. equal to 60. <laughs> 6, 0. Not 16. 6, 0. 6, T. Why is it equal to 60? Exactly, right? So you might do this first, right? You might just go, okay, this is 10 root 36. And then say, oh, but that's equal to 6 times 10, which is 60. So what I, the way I'd like you to think about this is like this, right? You go, okay, 5 times 2 is 10, root 6 times root 6. When they're the same, don't think of it as root 36. Think of it as 6, right? Root 6 times root 6 is 6. So you go, 5 times 2 is 10, root 6 times root 6 is 6, 10 times 6 is 60. Okay, it's perfectly fine if you do this, all right? There is nothing wrong with that, you know, but I'd like you to get to the point where you say, oh, uh, I got a root 5 times a root 5. Don't think of it as root 25. Think of it as 5. Right? Root 3 times root 3 is 3, not root 9. Right? I mean, it is root 9, but don't think about it that way. Just go 3. Okay? Because where is this going to happen? Not so much here. You won't usually get stuff like this. But the next thing that we're going to multiply is uh, monomial times a binomial. So what if I have, oh, yeah, I'll do this one. Okay, so we'll call this a monomial. We have a single term, root 5, times a binomial, 2 root 10 minus root 5. How do we multiply this? What law do we use? Distributive law. Right. We're going to distribute the root 5 through the bracket. So we have to multiply this times this, and then this times this. So it's going to be 2 root 50 minus 5. Which is then equal to this, right? Because we got to simplify. So you're mostly going to see the same radicals over and over again, right? You're going to see root 8, you're going to see root 12, you're going to see root 18, you're going to see root 20, you're going to see root 24, 28, like basically reasonably small numbers where the perfect square that comes out is usually a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. So root 50, 25 times 2 is 5 root 2. Okay, so the simplification is 10 root 2 minus 5. Now, maybe you could have written it. Some people will write it this way. Nothing wrong with that, right? As long as you take the root 25 down to a 5. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with just, you know, it's a little more mechanical. Right? You're just going to do it. You're just going to say, okay, it's 1 times 2 is 2 root 50 and minus root 25. And then, okay, now I've got to look at this. Wait, there's a 25 that goes into here, so it becomes 5 root 2, and that's just a 5. All right, let's do a couple more of those. Uh, page. Oh, let's throw in a... Uh,
Okay, what's my first product? What's the first product? Six root x squared. Just six x, right? Two times, three times two is six. Root x times root x is x. Six times x is six x. What's my next product? Yeah, root x y. Nothing you can do to simplify that. You're just putting the numbers under the numbers or the variables under the radical sign. And what's my last one? Okay. Minus 21 root x. No simplification. There's no collection here. Right? There were three different terms. I mean, if things simplified, really, if I could simplify this first, I would. Right? Whenever you're doing math, if you find an, if you have an opportunity where you can simplify something correctly then take it and simplify it, you know, before you go on. Why would it be 7x on the last one? Okay, so it's 3 root x times negative 7, right? So it's just negative 7 times 3 is negative 21 and then root x. Oh, okay. So this is the term that's multiplied. It's just minus 7 times that. Okay, so here we had a root x. So the root x times root x was root x squared or just x. Here the x and the y are under the <coughs> radical. There's a 1 in front here. So it's 3 times 1, and then root x times 1. Okay. Uh, what's the next step up? I guess the next step up is to multiply binomials. Okay, so multiplying binomials. Let's just give me all the products. What do we get when we do this? X squared minus 3x plus 2x plus two X minus 6, right? So the idea is what do we use to do this? Foil. Foil, right? We foil it out, right? It's first, outer, inner, last. It's basically just applying the distributive law twice. You're taking the x and distributing it through this, and then you're taking the 2 and distributing it through this, right? Just keep in mind, right, we're going to get four products. Okay, we're going to get four products when we multiply two binomials together. And then they may collect down after that. Okay, so let's give it a try. Uh, let me find an example I want. Big one up. Okay, three root two plus five root three times two roots, that way. Now, we wouldn't do that. It's stupid because then that would just, never mind. Can't have root six and a root six. Those are like terms. I would have just subtracted it and then did monomial times binomial. So let's change that. Let's make it four root 12. Okay, how many products are we going to get? Four. What's the first one? Six root 12. What's the next one? Yeah, minus 12 root 24. Plus 10 root 18. Minus 20 root 36. Yeah. You know what? Just write the root 36. I know it's a 6, but it's not, it's not as obvious as root 6 times root 6 is 6, right? As a matter of fact, maybe this is what you want to do. Even if you recognize this is a 6 and you could just write the last term as minus 120, just write it as 20 root 36, right? So just do it in a mechanical fashion. Mechanical fashion says, I'm not even going to think about this. I'm just going to do it. Once I've got this done, now I'll go through and I'll say, well, okay, root 12 is 2 root 3. So it's 6 times 2 root 3 minus 12 times 2 root 3. 6, right? 24 is 4 times 6, so that's 2 root 6. Plus 10 times 3 root 2. Minus 
20 times 6. Okay, so we get 12 root 3 minus 24 root 6 plus 30 root 2 minus 120. So in this case, there are four different products, right? I mean, they, there were four here. There were no like terms that we could see. We simplified them down, and we still have four different products, right? So there was nothing else to simplify, nothing further. And sometimes it works out that way, right? You just get four. Uh, we have to express them as mixed, and then we're done. So that would be your final answer. That would be your final answer. Yeah, nothing you can do. So looking at your final answer, you just want to make sure, is there a perfect square that goes into 3? No. 6? No. 2? No. Or is there, is there a perfect square that goes into 12? Yeah, 4 goes into 12. 4 goes into 24. If 4 goes into 16, no, it's too big, right? And 9 goes into 18. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's do one that actually, well, yeah, let's do one that actually, that's what we got. <coughs> About 3 root 2 plus 4 root 5. <coughs> times 4 root 2 minus 3 root 5. So this time we have some like radical. Right? We got root 2 that's going to be multiplying a root 2. We have a root 5 that will be multiplying a root 5. Okay. Now if we want to do this mechanically, we could just write this. So you can do this two different ways, right? I'll just, let's just mechanically do it. We won't think about it. We'll just do it. So 3 times 4 is 12. 12 root 4. Minus 9 root 10. Plus 16 root 10. Minus 12 root 25. So that's mechanical. I didn't think about root 4 is 2. Okay. Some people might want to do this and go, hey, I got like root, so 3 times 4 is 12. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. I'm going to get 24. Right? Because that's what I need to do now. This is 24. This is plus 7 root 10. And this is minus 60. Right? And I'm not going to write root 25 as 5. I'm just going to think this is 12 times 5. And now we can collect these guys so we get negative 36 plus 7 root 10. Okay, so the root 10. So in this case, we had some terms multiplied together giving us just plain old numbers, right? So we got two numbers and we've got two like radicals, the root 10s. So the root 10s collect together into one term and the numbers collect together into the other term. So from four products, right? We still have to have four products. If you're multiplying two binomials, there will be four products, right? But then there are some like terms that collect down and uh, make things a little bit simpler. Okay, let's try squaring a binomial. So let's say we do... Uh, Okay, how do you want to handle this? So you have two ways. You might want to just write it out one beside the other, right? Because it makes it easier to see when you're foiling. If you know how to square binomials, you'll say, well, I'm going to square the first term. I'm going to multiply these two terms together and double it. And I'm going to add the square of the last term. Okay? For me, I just assume, let's just write it out. Okay? Makes it a little bit easier to see visually right now. I can foil it out. I'm going to do it a little bit simpler this time. 3 times 3 is 9. Root 2 times 2 is 2. So 3 root 2 times 3 root 2 is, is 18. Okay. I'm going to go minus 12 root 20. I'm going to go minus another 12 root 20. And then a plus, it has to be a plus, right? Because it's minus 10. Because you're squaring something, the last term is always positive. So we get 4 times 4 is 16. Root 10 times root 10 is? 10 times 16 is? 
160. So this becomes 178 minus 24 root 20, which is 178 minus, anyone? Forty-eight root five. Root twenty is two root five. Okay. And again, I don't care. You know, if you want to do this in a few steps, that's fine. Right. I mean, whatever works for you. Right. And whatever you do it, you know, whatever, however you do it in your homework, do it that way on the test. Don't try and switch over halfway. Oh, I'm going to switch from one way or the other. Okay. Just do it in your homework. If you start becoming comfortable going from this to this, then just do all the questions that way. Check every answer after every question. Oh, don't do 10 questions in a row. Oh, I just did those all wrong. You know, do a question, check the answer. Do a question, check the answer. Uh, if there are variables in there, the variables work the same way. So, got about two or three more things I want to show you, and then, then we'll be okay. We'll be done. So we'll do 3 root x minus root y, and we'll do 2 root x plus 3 root y minus All right, so this is going to combine a few things, right? It's going to combine multiplying, we're squaring, multiplying two binomials, we're squaring a binomial, and then we've got a subtraction operation afterwards. So when we do questions like this, we just need to be really careful with our brackets. We need to keep in mind that we're subtracting the square of that, right? So we have to square that first before we do the subtraction. Remember order of operations, right? First thing you would do really is to square this, right? Because that's exponents. Second thing you do is multiply this, it's multiplication. And the third thing you would do is you're going to subtract this. Now, the thing we could do, we could do this multiply and this multiply at the same time, just keep them separated by the minus sign. All right? So let's put a set of brackets down. Let's do this multiply. This will be 6x, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Root x times root x is x. This will give me plus 9 root xy. Okay, that's my second one. This will give me minus 2 root xy. And this will give me minus what? Minus 3y, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that instead of brackets. That's my first multiply. I'm just going to keep brackets around it. Minus, I'm going to do my second multiply now, and I'm going to put brackets around it. That's this one, because there's another multiply. This is multiplying the two binomials. I'm going to square it like I would square a binomial, right? Just in the good old days, right? If I gave you like 3x plus 7 squared, you square the first term. You multiply these two together and double it, so it'll be 42x, and then you square the last term. Okay, so I'm going to square the first term. Root x times root x is... X. I'm going to multiply these two together, which is 2 root xy, and I'm going to double it. So it'll be plus 4 root xy. And I'm going to square the last term, which will be 2 times 2 is 4. Root y times root y is y. And it'll be 4y. Okay? So that's squaring this binomial. It's squaring a binomial using the pattern, right? X squared, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay? Or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, now what I'm going to do is going to go through and remove the brackets. And I never really had to put this set of brackets in there, right? But if I bracket everything, then I'll remember to distribute. Minus x, minus this, minus this, right? And that's where the common mistakes, right? That's the mistake on the test that we asked you for. You know, Eileen made a mistake. Where was it? Well, it was in, in doing this kind of thing. Which then many of you proceeded to make that same mistake at the top of the next page, where you distributed a negative wrong. And I just wrote, you know, you caught the mistake over there, but now you made it here. So it is a common and easy error to make. 
right? And that's why I like to do this, separate it out. Just do this, put a minus, put brackets there, so you'll remember now, okay, let's go through remove brackets. And at the same time, I'm going to collect these terms. I'm going to get 6x plus 7xy, root xy, minus 3y. Every sign in here changes, so it'll be minus x, minus 4 root xy, minus 4y. Okay, we get 5x's plus 3 root xy minus 7y. Alright, so I'll give you a moment you can copy that down. Any questions on that? So we're multiplying a binomial, but we're doing that and we're just keeping it separate. Right? We're going to separate that out. We're then multiplying, or sorry, multiplying binomials. We're then multiplying binomials again, but in this case, it's a special case, which is squaring a binomial. So I did that, keeping brackets. If there was a plus sign there, I wouldn't even worry about the brackets. I would just write every term down, right, and then just start collecting them together. But with the minus sign, we have to take a little bit more care. What if we take something like I want you to work that out. What do you get? So you get 7 root 3 minus root 2 multiplied by 7 root 3 plus root 2. I don't know what you get for an answer. I know what the answer is. kind of weird, right? Because there's all these radicals in there, but the number came out. Let's try another one. What's this work out to then? Right, that we if we multiply these radicals here, there's all these radicals, but we're ending up with a rational number, right? Just a plain old number. So why did that happen? So let's move this over here. It's going to erase it. What, what did we get here? We got 49 root 9. I assure you, I never do it that way. But uh, plus 14 root 3 minus 14 root 3 minus root 4. Thank you. 
All right, so where were we? So this was 147. These guys go away. Oops. Okay, so that's 145. So what happened here? Move this over. So 4 root 25 minus 6 root 10 plus 6 root 10 minus 9 root 4. What's happening with these middle terms here? They're canceling out, right? And they're the only terms that are actually radicals because this is just 20 and this is 18 and that's equal to 2. So what do you call this type of thing? Difference of, so it's really a difference of squares, right? We have a plus b times a minus b. When you multiply a difference of squares, you get a squared minus b squared, which means we're squaring a radical, which is going to come out as just a rational number, and we're subtracting from it the square of another radical, which is just a rational number. Okay? And there's actually a technical name, so the technical name for this is 7 root 3 minus root 2 and 7 root 3 plus root 2 are called conjugate binomials or they're just called conjugates. Uh, we'll say conjugate binomials. So what a conjugate is, it's the same two terms but with the opposite sign. Right? So it's the conjugate of The conjugate of, where were we? Uh, 2 root 5 plus 3 root 2 is the same two terms but with an opposite sign, right? Minus 3 root 2. The reason we do that, well, we're setting up a difference of squares. Why do we do that? We'll get rid of the radicals. Why do we do that? That's tomorrow. Okay. Why do we do that? So that we can simply we can rationalize the denominator when we're uh, dividing radicals. Okay. But tomorrow is dividing radicals. Okay. So that's it for today. So there is the page operations on radicals. The answers are on the next page. Okay. That's in your little booklet. And then there are questions out of the textbook. Right? There's just not enough questions in the textbook, so make sure you do these as well. Right? And then answers are over here. We shouldn't do number three, right? And you don't do... Oh. No, so it's operations and radicals one and two. Also, do not do question 23 on page 278, because we don't know how to do that yet. No, we don't because it deals with arithmetic sequences and we haven't done sequences in the series yet. Okay, so don't do 28 on 278. Just do worksheet operations on radicals, numbers one and two, and then questions from the book.